Hello folks, looks like Santa Claus came early this year. In fact, real early. I was expecting these packages tomorrow. When they came today, I was so excited. I could hardly make this video. I want to just take this stuff out of the box immediately. But if you saw my videos earlier this year, you'd know I've been wanting to get into F2 high-speed imaging for a long time. And uh, a lot of you are wondering, how come I never made the jump? Well, I did get pretty far. I was talking to OPT. I was asking them all sorts of questions on uh, high-speed imaging. And the, the, the main roadblock for me was I, I didn't want to tear down my CGX setup. That, that thing has delivered me a couple of NASA A-pods. Um, well, two of the three anyway, and there's no way I, I, I want to mess with it. That will always be a permanent rig. So I thought, okay, why don't I just step back and I'll build a second rig. So um, I thought, I was thinking in terms of a Rasa 8, but I thought the first thing I'll buy is an EQ6R Pro mount. Um, I thought, I bought that with the Rasa 8 in mind. So I, I waited for, for that mount to go on sale because they always seem to have a sale where you can get 250 bucks off on it. So I bought the mount first. Then I bought a mono camera, and I thought, you know what, that's enough new toys for this year. And uh, I'll get the Rasa 8 next year. That'll be my big thing next year, F2 high-speed imaging. So what happened is uh, Celestron gave me a call. Can you believe it? I was not expecting that at all. Amir, a VP from Celestron, he gave me a call, and he said, hey, Chuck, uh, he follows me on Instagram. He said, you know, I love your images. And we at Celestron um, appreciate all of your YouTube videos because all of my videos actually use Celestron equipment. And uh, he said they even um, watch some of my videos and discuss them um, in their meetings. I'm like, wow, that was a, that was a big surprise. So uh, we all, uh, it was a really cool talk. And uh, I thought, okay, cool. I got some friends in, in high places now. I've got a direct line with Celestron. That's really cool, you know? And so, yeah, I said later, and, you know, we said goodbye. And then uh, maybe a couple weeks later, Amir, he called back and said, you know, Chuck, we know you've been wanting to get into F2 imaging for a while. So how would you like it if we sent you a Rasa 8? And I thought, <laughs> that's the exact scope I've been wanting. I call it a scope. But it's an astrograph. You can't look through it. It's just for astrophotography only. And I said, yeah, send it. That's what I want. <laughs> and so um, here we are. He sent me a, a Rasa 8, and I didn't pay for it. Um, everything in these two boxes were sent from Celestron um, free of charge for me to keep. Now, how do you like that? And it's really, uh, I think it's... Uh, out of appreciation, I guess, because, you know, I've been an early adopter of the CGX, and they feel I've been really good for their brand um, over the years with my YouTube channel, and I've delivered, um, really, uh, three NASA A-pods using Celestron mounts, and I think they're really happy with what I've done, and even um, some of the issues I've had with uh, um, Celestron mounts in the past, they, they definitely do pay attention, and right now everything is running smoothly, so... Um, thanks, Amir, for sending me all this stuff. I, I, I still can't believe it. I never would have thought um, I would be getting this. Um, and uh, one thing about my videos, though, even though I use Celestron equipment, um, I'm not a fanboy of any particular brand. My videos are geared just to capture um, deep sky objects. That, that's the whole intent of my videos. The only time I really discuss hardware as if I'm doing an unboxing video to, to show off my new equipment. Other than that, I, I'm all about deep sky imaging and uh, the hardware, if it's doing its job, it should be invisible. Um, and I'll just let people know this is the equipment I use, but it really takes a back seat to, to the images I like to create. And uh, Celestron, they, they told me, look, um, here's, here's the Rasa 8, you use it, we're, we're not gonna, there's no script, there's no bullet points we want you to cover. They just said, here you go, man. We want to see what you can capture with it. And I like that that's just the way I want it. They don't want to, you know, even attempt to try and change the format of my videos. 
and I don't really have a, a format for my videos. I, I really, most of the time, don't even know what I'm doing, and I'm totally unscripted. So, anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore. Let's just unbox this stuff. And I'm going to take a break because the, the furnace is going on and off, and the furnace is right behind the camera. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so this one over here is obviously the Rasa. And this box is a box full of some goodies. I think I know what's in here, but let, let's just take a look. Wow, that's really good tape. And by the way, I'm, I'm glad to see the, the boxes look in good condition. Um, uh, a lot of people I've talked to said the Rasa holds its collimation very well, but you never you never know about the ride over here. Was it dropped? Was it kicked? Who knows? But I, I hope uh, it says here a uh, team, two people to lift it, but only one person carried it to my doorstep. So you know, you know how that is. I needed. Thank you, Thelestrad. All right. I don't know. Let's see. I think I still have an 8 inch dew heater. I may use that in conjunction with the, the dew shield. So, cool. I, I wanted that. All right, what is this? Celestron focus motor. Now I admit, this is the Celestron focus motor. When they told me that they were gonna send me a Rasa, I actually did ask for one thing. And I said, look, you guys know, I like to be automated. And I'm sorry if the furnace just went off again and there might be background noise, but I, I don't wanna stop the video right now. And, and I did ask for the I did ask for the focus motor. I said, you guys know I like to be automated and I could really use that Celestron electronic focuser. Could you send that too? <laughs> I kind of got a little greedy and they said, not a problem. So sweet. I wanted that. I wanted it ever since I saw it. Oh, let's see. An adapter. Um, I'll be investigating all this stuff later off camera. Right now, you would just see me fumbling around right now. More adapters. I got lots to learn here, folks. But I'm up for the challenge. Oh, I think I know what this is. Can you guess what this is? It's the, the top rail. Um, this doesn't actually come included with uh, the Rasa 8. It's a separate order, but I knew I I would want something to, to hang my my guide scope on. And I think there's other ways you can hang on a guide scope, but I really wanted the top rail. And so I kind of asked for this too. I, you know, I was, you get greedy. I couldn't help it, but I wanted this too. And they said, not a problem. Ha. All right. Now, what is this? Right angle correct image finder scope. Finder scope? I was not expecting any finder scope. Let me see what this is exactly. That's nice. A nice finder scope. I was not expecting this at all. I didn't. Wow. 
That's a nice touch. Thank you. I feel like it's Christmas. I think that's it. All right. Now let's open the Ross. I'll be right back. All right. Time for the main attraction. Let's do this. And by the way, um, I'm still going to be running two rigs per night, and this is going to replace my Orion ED80T refractor because um, it, it has a, a similar focal length and a similar field of view. So I thought um, I'm going to send that refractor back to solar duty. Um, that, that refractor actually got me off uh, my first NASA A-Pod with solar, so it's right at home doing that, so I, I have no problem. So this is going on the EQ6R, and it's going to replace that, that refractor. Now, <laughs> this is most definitely a culture shock for me. Does this mean with this scope, the, the time I spend capturing objects 25 hours, 30 hours worth of data, I don't have to do that anymore because at F2, um, just to compare, um, my, my next star, Ada C, is F10, and I still use that for the moon and planets. But F10, um, the lower the F number, uh, the faster the scope can bring in the brightness of a deep sky nebula. And to give you an idea, F2 compared to F10 um, doesn't mean it's five times faster. Um, it means, this is crazy, but it means it's 25 times faster than my next star 8SC. And how you figure that out is you take F10 and you square it, so you got 100, and then you square the F2, 4. So 100 divided by 4 is 25 times faster. That's how you figure out the, the difference in the speed between that 8 inch and, and this 8 inch Rasa. And it's compared to my refractor that I'm replacing it with at F6, so that would be um, 6 times 6 is 36 divided by 4, it's 9 times faster than, than that refractor. So right? and that's a culture shock. I, I'm not used to this. It's, it's just to me, it sounds crazy. So, okay, so it looks like there's a box within a box. You know what, I don't need to take the box out of the box. I'll just open up this. What am I thinking? See if I can set it down on the rail here. If it will hold. Alright, I'm gonna take a time out to make sure the camera angle is adjusted right. Okay, so here it is. Now what's different about the Rasa from um, just about every other scope is that the camera will be mounted on the front. And I see a lot of people, they like to use an OSC camera with this. But during the winter months, I, I still like to do mostly narrow band with the mono camera. So I'm going to use my mono ASI 1600 camera. And I think one of those adapters I got was actually a filter slider. So I'll be swapping in filters. And I see people, this thing is so fast, I see people, they finish objects off in, in, in a single night. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm a patient imager. I, I don't have a need to do that. So, and I don't want to swap filters in the middle of the night. That's not for me. 
So I figure maybe one or two nights I'll be using HA, probably capturing multiple objects. Then the, maybe the next time out I'll be using a different filter and so on like that. So I can just stick with um, uh, basically hopefully being able to image while I sleep like I do with everything else. I don't want to be up capturing flats in the middle of the night. That's, that's definitely not my style. I like to be as automated as I can. So um, that's, that's, that's my plan for that anyway. And so that's the front and that's where the, the camera is mounted. Let me show you the, the rear here. I want to be very careful. Oh, don't bump it, please don't bump it. Okay, so um, so there's no mirror lock, and what I heard about the Rasa 8 is that the, the, the primary mirror doesn't flop. Um, so I don't think that's an, an issue without having, since uh, it doesn't have mirror lock. And probably the first night out, I'm going to be doing manual focus. I just want to get a feel for it before I, I attach the, the electronic focuser. And it does come with a battery pack. For It, it has a built-in fan here with power. But, and that's to bring the, the mirror down to the ambient, uh, ambient temperature outside, but this is going to be an outdoor scope anyway, so I don't think I'm going to ever have to really um, worry about that. So, um, well, I, I think that's all I've got to say for now. I, uh, if I say anything else, I'd be faking it because I don't know enough yet, but I will definitely be learning fast. So, uh, that's all I got for now, folks. Thank you, Celestron, and I will see everybody later. And uh, uh, the reason I want to go to... There's no way I'm going to get through this. I really need a script because I am clueless right now. I'm speechless. Hello folks. Looks like Santa Claus came early today. I have no idea what I'm going to say next. Uh, like I was saying, I got pretty far. No foul language this time. No, nope. I'm holding myself. Hello, folks. So, it looks like Santa Claus has motherfucking arrived. <laughs>